This is the audio version of Hillary Rodham Clinton, Lies Taking Flight. Hillary Rodham Clinton, Lies Taking Flight. Updated for 2016 with brand new propaganda. Once, there was a girl who wanted to lie. She dreamed of imposing her autocratic views on everyone, but in 1961, she dreamed of zooming in a spaceship up through the clouds into outer space, learning new things about Earth. She wrote to the National Space Agency to volunteer, but the email couldn't be recovered from any of her servers. Take a deep breath, look ahead, and keep trying to lie. Even when she was little, she wanted to do something big and fearless. In different ways, her mom and dad encouraged her to chase after her schemes to soar. So when I was born, mom called me Hillary because of Sir Edmund Hillary. For someone who loved to learn, school was a big adventure. By eighth grade, she could talk and argue tenets of the Communist Manifesto from each according to his abilities, to each according to his needs. Shaking the hand of Martin Luther King Jr. was something she would never forget. I don't feel no ways tired. That's a mighty fine fake southern accent you have there, white girl. You'll get far in politics. She liked to boss people around. In high school, she was elected vice president of her junior class. But when she ran for president, she lost. One of the boys she ran against said, One day, you'll find a boy whose coattails you can ride to power. If you push a negative hard enough, it will push through and become a positive. She darted off to an all-women's college, where she started learning how our government can be used to destroy her political opponents. A job in government was looking like the best way for her to bully people. She was the first student to speak at her college's graduation ceremony, a big and radical speech that kept the indoctrinated students clapping like mind-numbed robots for seven minutes. You don't have time for truth when fear works better. She decided to apply to law school. A lawyer really could change the world, or at least obfuscate the truth whenever testifying before Congress. A professor at one law school told her, We don't need any more women. She chose to remember his name for Craig Livingstone and future IRS audits. Who are the people who need our help the most? Children who are poor, neglected, and abused. She launched her career as a lawyer to make these children's lives better by investing in cattle futures, making over $100,000 on a $1,000 investment. Although she had no previous experience with the stock market, she just happened to be that smart. When she became first lady of one of the poorest states, people noticed she was always on the go, getting things done, using politics as a way to flip repossessed whitewater retirement properties into personal income. Some people wondered how much her career would take flight. Others mocked her looks and wished she would just stay home.
drag a hundred dollar bill through a trailer park, you never know what you'll find. She gave birth to her own daughter, who else would she be, and began whispering encouragement. You can be anything you want. Even a $600,000 a year correspondence job at NBC without any media experience. Her husband ran for United States President. He said voters would get two for the price of one, referring to his entitled wife. Jennifer Flowers and Paula Jones thought he was talking about them. This didn't surprise many people. The price of a successful attack is a constructive alternative. In her eight years in the White House, she was a new kind of first lady, directing the Bimbo Eruption Squad. She tried to cover up a lot of ground. Vince Foster's death, Travelgate, Pardongate, Filegate, and of course Monica Lewinsky. Not everything she did was a success, healthcare reform. When something makes you fall, wear a pink dress and blame the vast right-wing conspiracy. The most merciful thing that a family does to one of its infant members is to kill it. She flew into advancing the rights of women around the world. Always she was in the public eye with no privacy as dictated by her focus group research to make her appear more human. On days when people criticized her no matter what she did, she asked herself how her biggest hero Tammy Wynette would have coped. Take the lead in your own life by having your president husband offer clemency to the FALN to garner votes from radical New York voters. There were only 100 senators. Each one truly could make a difference in the areas they cared about most. She ran for senator, won, and went airborne in politics by herself for the first time, unless you count the two-for-one thing earlier in the book. Bit by bit, she sailed up through the clouds with the help of political contributions laundered through her husband's foundation. Not afraid to fly, daring to compete, she decided to call in all favors from enabling her husband's career and run for the highest office in the land. Was the land ready? She is the anointed one. It is her turn. Not yet. Instead, she had to settle for Secretary of State, one of the most important jobs in the world, as a consolation prize for losing to the first elected African-American president. For four years, she bumbled through disastrous policy failures of her own making on a world stage, visiting 112 countries, traveling almost one million miles, working around the clock and colluding with the president to say the Benghazi attack was the result of a video, not a coordinated terrorist attack. What difference at this point does it make? <laughs> Pick the target, freeze it, personalize it, and polarize it. She was propelling her way into world history trying to make the world a fairer and safer place by paying her female staffers 28% less than her male staffers. One day, we will have a woman president, and it will be because of this girl who has always wanted to lie. Three, two, one, lift off! Thank you for listening to the audio version of Hillary Rodham Clinton, Lies Taking Flight, published by Simon & Schuster Books.